As for me, in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today is Friday, July 17th, Friday of the 15th week of Ordinary Time. Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Leroy Farrell. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all for who the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. When Hezekiah was mortally ill, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, Thus says the Lord, put your house in order, for you are about to die, you shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. O Lord, remember how faithfully and wholeheartedly I conducted myself in your presence, doing what was pleasing to you. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go tell Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of your father David, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. In three days you shall go up to the Lord's temple. I will add fifteen years to your life. I will rescue you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will be a shield to this city. Isaiah then ordered a poultice of figs to be taken and applied to the boil that he might recover. Then Hezekiah asked, What is the sign that I shall go up to the temple of the Lord? Isaiah answered, This will be the sign for you from the Lord, that he will do what he has promised. See, I will make the shadow cast by the sun on the stairway to the terrace of Ahaz. Go back the ten steps it has advanced. So the sun came back the ten steps it had advanced. The word of the Lord. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Once I said, in the noontime of life I must depart. To the gates of the nether world I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. I said, I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I behold my fellow men among those who dwell in the world. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. My dwelling like a shepherd's tent is struck down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life like a weaver who severs the last thread. 
You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Those, those live whom the Lord protects. Yours is the life of my spirit. You have given me health and life. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry, how he went into the house of God and ate the bread of offering, which neither he nor his companions, but only the priests, could lawfully eat? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you, something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned these innocent men. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. edit I need to make in the gospel here, a repeated word. There it is. Okay, this gospel today, I think, makes more sense uh, with a little bit of context. So a little bit of background on why these Pharisees were so concerned uh, by this action of the disciples on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath and the Sabbath rest was one of the main sort of markers of identity for Jews in this first century. It was the practice of keeping holy the Sabbath, uh, resting on the Sabbath that separated them from the Gentiles. And they were living in a time when they were surrounded by all sorts of uh, pagans who didn't rest on the Sabbath. And so keeping the Sabbath stood out as an expression of who they were. Uh, as a people in relationship with God. It was this expression of their fidelity to the covenant with God, of their relationship with Him. So it was important in that respect. Uh, Also important because uh, the prophet Jeremiah makes this clear, that one of the reasons that the Jews had suffered so much for so many years was their failure to observe the commandment to keep holy the Sabbath. It was this failure that brought judgment on Israel, and uh, which came to a head in the year 586. This was the year of the Babylonian invasion, which destroyed their land, destroyed the temple, and then sent them into exile. And Jeremiah says, hey, one of the reasons for this is your failure to keep the Sabbath. So not only is it a marker of our fidelity to the Lord uh, and our identity as a people, but also it's a matter really of our security as a people. If we don't want to be destroyed again, we need to keep the Sabbath. And so that's the context when today Jesus and his disciples are walking through this field and the disciples are hungry and so they just take some of the grain and eat it. And it seems like a simple enough action. Uh, But to these Pharisees who are very zealous about keeping the Sabbath, they see that as an act of harvesting. And harvesting is unlawful on the Sabbath. It's a work that you set aside on that day. And so they call out the disciples. 
They say to Jesus, hey, what's going on here? Your, your disciples are violating the Sabbath. They're working on this day. And they get a response that I'm sure they weren't expecting. Uh, because Jesus doesn't address this issue in particular, whether or not picking grain to eat it is harvesting or not. But instead, he makes bold claims about himself, his disciples, and the Sabbath. And so first, he compares himself with David. And his disciples as the companion of David. And this would have been a, a messianic and kingly claim putting himself on par with David and saying, hey, David and his companions, they ate that bread that was set aside and reserved for the priests only when it was the Sabbath because they were in need. Here we are in need. Same deal. That's a claim with a certain level of boldness. And then he compares himself and his disciples to the priests of the temple who do what would otherwise be unlawful on that day by working for the worship and sacrifice. And I sort of relate to that one. Uh, I work Sundays, you know, uh, and I'd hate to think that I'm in violation of the Lord's Day because that's the day that I put forth the most effort into my work, right? And so that's a bold claim, but then he gets very bold and he makes himself greater than the temple. And the temple is like it for Israel. It's their symbol of who they are as a nation. This is the place of life and worship. This is where God meets his people. And Jesus says, there's something greater than the temple here. That this, me, this is where God meets his people. This is the source of life and worship. And then if that wasn't clear enough to them, he calls himself the Lord of the Sabbath which puts himself on par with God, who created the Sabbath in the first place. And so Jesus is saying some very powerful and bold things about himself today. And what might we take away from all of this? Well, First, and hopefully just a, a reminder to us of the importance of the Sabbath and keeping holy the Sabbath, not as simply a rule to follow, but a way for us to be faithful to God. A way of staying in right relationship with God, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, who set this out for us. It's like when we can get Sunday right and enter into the Lord's day, we're getting something of our relationship with God right. And we see that the Sabbath, the Lord's Day, is about the Lord and focusing on the Lord and not ourselves. It's not a day for the regular work, for the common things, for catching up on chores. It's a day for being with the Lord and being on mission with the Lord. To be about the Lord's things. And right now, this is all just a little bit goofy uh, with, for example, the Sunday obligation being lifted. That primary way that we as Catholics keep holy, the Sabbath, now it's not obligatory. And so we need extra effort, I would argue, to enter well into the Sabbath. And I would just encourage you to pray for our brothers and sisters who are now using Sunday as just another day off. Now, that we as Catholics might reclaim the Lord's Day and live it well. Today we might pray that we will be faithful to the Lord by being faithful to the Sabbath. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sake this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Watch me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and Andrew, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, Saint Joseph, Saint Paul, praise be Jesus Christ.